нашей конференции присоединяется соучредитель фонда объединения женщин. Because we have Marie Skoldowski Curie, and her name is almost always accompanied with the word first, the first woman to win the Nobel Prize, the first to receive the prize twice, the first woman to teach at Sorbonne. So, Alexander, good day. Good day, Elena. So, my first question why do you think gender balance in nuclear uh, industry is relevant? Thank you. That's a wonderful question. I love this question. Actually, everything that I do outside my professional activities is related to pr projects, uh, project initiatives in our foundation, Association of Women in the Nuclear Industry. And what we are seeing today is that companies, more and more companies, especially high-tech companies, do take um, these issues in their policies and their strategies and one of the trends there is gender equality and gender balance and when we are talking about gender balance and gender equality by speaking of the balanced approach to forming managerial teams by talking about engaging more and more women of all ages girls women elderly women to uh, have them fulfilling themselves in their career and uh, participating in decision-making at various levels. As far as nuclear industry is concerned, the dynamic development of the nuclear sector, including next generation technology, is something that stimulates the necessity to prepare more and more highly qualified human resources and women of all ages attracted to the nuclear industry. Rosatom, a state corporation, has joined the United Nations Global Contact. It is the largest corporate social responsibility and sustainable development initiative for businesses across the world. So for the nuclear industry as the global technology leader, the focus on engaging women and the policy of inclusivity and equal opportunities is something that is very important. It's one of the most important focuses for us. So our association is instrumental in that because actually forming industrial communities is really helpful. We were formed by our own initiative back in the year 2016, and now we're seeing the market and the society to, for, to, to form more and more such uh, communities, such associations. So when women are included and when management is done via sustainable, uh, balanced uh, principles, using these principles, we can see the effects. So do we need gender balance and what it is? Well, the companies that are managed by diversified managerial teams increase their financial uh, metrics very substantial, substantially socially and not only. Well, it would be logical to assume that everybody would just compete to be uh, diversified and inclusive. Well, I, I would say differently. It's not mainstream. It's rather not the result of hype, but a conscious step in strategy building. Uh, building the strategy fit for the future. I wouldn't say that companies would compete in this area because big businesses, especially nuclear industry, the global industry, is rather a platform to exchange best practices and form common vision and common approaches to the topic. We are developing tools that would allow everyone to participate and achieve the metrics and the goals that are necessary for gender balance. Speaking of experience, there were uh, precedents in the global nuclear industry of women who have reached career heights. For example, the Director General of the World Nuclear Association, the former head of the French company Arriva. Or is it just exception? N well, no. Yeah, and yeah, we are saying that more and more women leaders, CEOs of major companies is emerging, and it's not by coincidence. Rather, it's the result that we're already seeing, the result of introducing gender-balanced teams in our strategies in our companies when we engage girls in those processes. Speaking of role models, this is a very important uh, aspect. Because sometimes women are indeed lacking the opportunity to see this role model, to tell them of their success and achievements, 
and to, to show that it's doable. Yes, exactly, to show that it's doable. And by the way, we have this project. It was one of the first projects of ours. It's called Female Faces of the Nuclear Industry. It is there to increase popularity to certain jobs in nuclear industry. Ladies tell each other about their achievements and success, and we can see that it is received very, very warmly, and it engages truly. So it's it's really an opportunity to lend one shoulder that everything is possible. Do come and uh, try yourself. It's also worth mentioning that in Russia, high, uh, there are high percentages of highly qualified female um, resources, uh, scientific resources. But you need to help the girls. We have um, career guidance part to our activity, and through survey, we noticed that big numbers of girls do start their science and tech specialties. They start to study it, and then after first and second years, they lose their confidence, and they leave this industry, this, 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 this arena. And this is not me saying that. It's the data. So it is very important for them to overcome the stereotypes and barriers. Stereotypes are there. We can uh, close our eyes o on those or not, but they are there. So those companies who do support the equal opportunity policy and gender balance policy, I think they, they would want to accentuate mentoring. Speaking of education, your foundation helps attracting women to STEM, this being science, technology, engineering, and mathematics related jobs. What are your success there? Well, one of the main areas is international uh, cooperation. And let me tell you a few words about international cooperation first, and then I'll ask you a question. So we have variable formats of cooperation that have become traditional. And it creates a very important impetus that allows us to assess our opportunities and to, to create synergies with the international community, because we can do more when we do it together. So we have this international project. It's called Open Dialogue of Women in STEM. It's an international conference, and we had it in Obninsk, and a lot of girls participated in it. We had international speakers, we had Russian speakers, and they were uh, uh, talking about the barriers they encountered and how they over, uh, were overcoming them. And engagement levels were pretty high. And uh, the girls still communicate with each other, and we're even thinking of organizing mentoring within the framework of this project. One other thing is that um, in December we're about to have international conference of women in the nuclear industry. Same format, different audience, different um, higher educational institutions. Have you measured it? So the foundation exists for five years, right? So in five years, uh, how much did the number of women increase in, in, in nuclear? industry. 32.1% of women work in Rosatom, well, in the industry, and around 30% are in managerial positions. And this indicator is higher than the global indicator, and, and uh, higher than uh, average Russian value, exactly, and higher than averages of other high-tech industries. Uh, our foundation, and indeed it started five years ago, and we initiated this foundation now has more than 700 participants from 28 regions of our country and uh, from, from some of our uh, regions and also from other countries. And we created it uh, also in Turkey and Singapore. And thanks to the horizontal network and thanks to interaction, and we interact in common platforms where we don't have any ranks or anything. It's just common space, very supportive environment that allows ladies to really um, boost the I initiatives. Come, uh, they come to us with all the ideas they might have, and we support them. Very, uh, very impressive expansion, international expansion. So, what is the next uh, goal and, uh, and objective? One within the framework of international cooperation, I already mentioned above. Our representatives are participating in all kinds of international work groups on boosting gender balance. I'm, uh, I, I'm talking about NEA of OECD and IAEA in terms of developing the methodology uh, to improve the gender balance. So this year, 
with Ross Atom's support and active participation. We had a first international uh, survey on representation of women in the nuclear sector with 34 countries participating in it. We are now waiting for the results and what they measured were the barriers that women encounter when building their careers in nuclear industry, their positive expectations and other ways, other hurdles that might stand in their way to come to the high-tech sector. So as soon as we get those results, we'll see where we need to apply most efforts and what needs to be developed. So there are a lot of project, projects on uh, women leadership, board, but for this agenda to develop further and for us to have more and more cases of, yes, we managed to help, and this is the percentage we achieved, well, we need to measure first, right? The um, uh, the uh, base values. So gender surveys are very helpful. The agency helped us do it, and we are now expecting the results to understand where we're going and where we should go. And we are expanding geographically. We develop international cooperation because this is one of the most important directions, you know, exchange between scientific communities women exchanging the meanings and ideas in developing nuclear technologies and also career guidance of the young.